Welcome brides to our YouTube channel. I'm Ashley here without my accomplice Gordon. But I'm just going to do this video by myself today. So as you can tell by the title of this video down below, today we'll be talking about low budget wedding planning. This is really important for brides to be that don't want to spend so much money on their wedding day and I'm going to give some tips as I am currently wedding planning myself and I don't exactly have a lot of money to spend. Personally, my budget is 30,000 and less. We're gonna talk about that, whatever your budget may be. If your budget's less than that, I hope some of these tips that I'm going to be talking about today can help you in your wedding planning adventures. So if you're new to our channel, please hit that subscribe button, turn on your post notifications so you know when we upload videos, and give this video a huge thumbs up. All right, let's get to it. So what we're going to be talking about today involves pre-planning the wedding plan. That's something really critical. I, Gordon and I are not getting married this year. We're not getting married next year. We're hoping to get married if everything goes our plan, We'll be hoping to get married in like 2025, but right now I myself am pre-planning the plan so I know how much I'm going to actually be spending because I don't want any surprises. Let's just dive into the tips. So the first tip into low budget planning that I'd like to talk about is the peak season for wedding season is between May and September. So if you're looking to keep costs low, try to stay out of that peak season time depending on where you are. Me, I am in Canada, I'm in Toronto, so May to September is a really good time for weather-wise. Since we're trying to keep costs low, we might be looking into a wedding date maybe in March or April or October. For myself, Gordon and I don't have a wedding date in mind. We're just pre-planning our plan right now. We're very flexible as to when this happens. Ideally, it won't be in the winter time because winters in Toronto can be really cold and not very nice. Depending on your area, if you're in a hot, sunny climate, then get married at any time you want. Tip number two would be to cut down a guest list. What I did for my guest list and who I'd like to invite. I thought about my immediate family, people I spend holidays with. I do have some relatives overseas who I don't spend time with during Christmas, but I would still like them to join for our party. Try to keep things minimal. Like say for example, your parents have work friends that they want you in to invite maybe you can cut them out because everything just adds up. The reception cost is what usually costs the most, is the reception party. Do you have to rent the hall for how many people you need? They usually, reception halls will have different sizes for your different party size, but also where the cost adds up is when you're talking about catering. The plates are usually per head. So including yourself and your spouse and all your guests, it could be like, $44 a head, 44 minimum going up to a maximum, like maybe, who knows, $86 a person. So you have to really keep that in mind when you're trying to be conscious of your costs. When you're inviting friends, try to stick with people that you see, okay, you may not see on a regular basis. Like if you have a friend they haven't seen in a while, but you talk to them like frequently, those friends will be okay to invite. But when you're talking about friends that you haven't spoken to, say since high school, that you were really close with back then, you can probably cut them out. My third tip, flower alternatives can be cheaper than real flowers. For my party size specifically, not including the bride and groom's table, just like everyone who's sitting out beyond the dance floor really, like all my other guests, I have a number right now of about 10 tables for my gathering that I'm planning. For centerpieces, personally, I am considering on Amazon, I will insert a picture right here. It's like a little vase with real roses but they were perfectly preserved at their like peak beautifulness. And on Amazon, they are $99.99 each. I was able to find one on Amazon that was like a bit more expensive, $105, but that one was actually the cheapest one. Comparing that to regular flowers, your normal flowers for a wedding, I've noticed floralists, especially in Toronto, they charge $150 plus per centerpiece. 
So what you could do, if you're considering this option with me here, what Gordon and I were also thinking of doing was getting raffle tickets. So the raffle tickets for maybe $5 each, $10 at most. And then what, you can choose a guest from every table to take those centerpieces with you. What I really like about those arrangements from Amazon, they are real, as I mentioned. They are guaranteed to last one year minimum. And I've seen other YouTubers on YouTube, like they have them in their houses and apparently they've even lasted more than a year if you take care of them properly. So that's something I'm considering just to get people really excited and getting more people interested in the raffle. Ideally, if you want everyone on your guest list, say you have my party is 64 people, not including myself and Gordon. We want every single person on our list getting excited. I was really thinking about what would get them the most excited to buy into the raffle so I can make maximum sales on raffle tickets. So that's that was my idea that I came up with. Based on my in-depth research into the centerpieces, this is the cheapest option that I found. If you're interested, I can link down below in the description a link to Amazon.ca and you can purchase those $99 centerpieces for yourself. Tip number four, DIY. So you can do a different DIY projects for your wedding day if you wish. You can start with the invites. I'm not sure if that would actually be cheaper than buying invites. Say for example, on this website I've been looking into, it's called Minted. You'd have to really compare the cost between buying invites and the save the dates and all those. Compare it to just DIY making it yourself. The invites, I'm not 100% sure on if it's actually cheaper to make on your own, which I will say the definitely DIY is your own photo booths and like if you want like photo moments at your wedding. So for example, I looked into, I, I considered renting some decor options for my day when it comes. I wanted to rent an arch, like a rectangular arch with some curtains some fake flowers around it and some vase, like ceramic vases on the floor with some pompous coming out. It was actually cheaper to buy all those parts and pieces on Amazon rather than renting it. Renting that one setup alone on, I can't remember the website, but it was like thousand dollars just to rent it. I went on Amazon and I looked at the cost of actually buying the arch. I found your curtain set with fake flowers for this arch. The cost was drastically cheaper. It really depends on what you're renting, but renting may not be the cheapest option. That's my whole point. That's the only thing I was really interested in renting. Personally, I found that it just wasn't worth it. Tip number five is try to go with a simple and elegant wedding cake design. If you're actually going the route of getting a wedding cake like delivered to your reception venue, you want to go with simplest elegant design because you don't want too much to go into it because then the cost could just add up more. Another thing you could do to keep the wedding cake costs low is consider having a dessert bar where you can have relatives bake pies and bring it to the party. You can go to the grocery grocery store and buy some cakes from the grocery store and have it all set up on a dessert bar. That's actually something I might be actually considering. I have to actually look at the cost of like a wedding cake versus doing like a dessert bar kind of thing, but that could potentially be cheaper than buying a wedding cake. Tip number six, choose a naturally beautiful location so you don't need so much decor. So if you're getting married in a climate that is nice and sunny and you're not getting married during the peak season so say you're getting married in January and you're getting married somewhere outdoorsy that you don't need much decor that's actually really ideal because you won't need to spend so much money on decor it's very straightforward you don't need to buy so much or rent or really do anything to get your beautiful wedding photos. So I've noticed online that micro weddings are actually a thing. That's something I just learned of. Micro weddings, I believe they're for parties of 25 guests or less. I thought my wedding would be a micro wedding, but no. <laughs> so to keep costs low, what you could do if you have a, if you're having a micro wedding, try to find a venue that will allow you to bring your own alcohol. 
that could potentially be cheaper than like having an open bar or you could also consider your reception to be at a restaurant instead of a venue if you have a micro wedding it's just that small and you don't need a venue like so large you can consider having it at a restaurant if your party is small enough tip number eight recruit talented friends and be your own talent so for gordon myself gordon has a friend who is tech savvy in music equipment i am considering having him as our mc for the event we could also have him be our dj so if you yourself are planning your own wedding and you want to keep your costs low try to see what friends you have that could help you keep the entertainment costs down number nine borrow what you can so for myself i am going to be borrowing my mom's veil because so at one bridal shop I was looking at near Kipling subway station in Tobacco, I honestly could not find a single veil that I like. Given they do have a pretty handsome price range for veils, their veils go between $99 to $200. Compared to another bridal shop I found, they were selling veils for $1,000. I thought that was way too much. So I, I, I can't justify spending $1,000 on a veil that's longer than the wedding dress train. And also, my mom has had a lot of serious health issues. So that was another reason I really wanted to borrow hers. I thought it would mean more to her between our bond that I wore her veil on my wedding day. So that is what I plan on doing. I have to do a bit of fixing up to it. The comb, it kind of snapped. These repairs I'll be doing myself. I'm not taking it somewhere to get fixed professionally. I'm just gonna do it myself. Maybe add some rhinestones here and there. It keeps costs very, very, very low and minimal. Tip number 10, try to do your own hair and makeup. For me, my wedding day, I am considering buying that Revlon. I forget what it's called. I'll insert a photo here. It will blow dry your hair and brush it at the same time to create perfect blowout every time. And I won't need to pay someone to actually do my hair. And also if I don't have the time to spend at a beauty salon, then that also cuts my time down too. I do have a little bit of experience doing my own makeup. I did my own makeup for my high school graduation. I did my own makeup for Christmas events with work in the past. So if you're that kind of person, or maybe you have a friend who's in the makeup industry that wouldn't mind doing your makeup maybe for free, try that to keep your costs low. I actually might consider it. I have a friend who's in the makeup industry. I'll see, well, I won't ask her to do it for free, but maybe she can give me a discount. Tip number 11 that I found. So there is this website called opportunitybridal.com. They do pop-up wedding dress sales all across Canada. They have dress sizes between size 2 and 28, I believe, if you're plus size like me. And their price range is actually pretty low. The cost of dresses is between $400 and $1,200 compared to going to a bridal shop where the cheapest dress you could potentially find is like three thousand dollars plus alteration this is a good idea to help keep costs low tip number 12 no limo gord wanted a limousine to drive us on our wedding day to and from we are also considering cutting that cost out we do have some relatives that do drive some nice fancy cars so maybe we can have them be our limo driver for the day and night potentially especially if we offered to detail their car pay for it that's still cheaper than actually renting out a limo and hiring a driver for a day tip number 13 try to see if you can find a dual purpose venue if you don't wish or doesn't matter to you if you're getting married at a church try to see if you could find a venue that'll have multiple rooms so you can get married in one room and then in the other room goes straight into your reception. This will cut your cost down. This will also cut your time down for the whole day because you're all in one place. You won't need the transportation to get you from A to B. If you're like me and you're doing the DIY decor, you're still gonna need some time for setup. 
So maybe try and ask friends or people attending your party to help you set up so you can be done faster or maybe set up in advance. For the dual purpose venue, you will still need to pay for the officiant. Getting married at a church or getting married somewhere at a chapel, to the best of my understanding from speaking to my relatives, my parents who are married, the actual wedding ceremony is not what the most of the cost is. The most of the cost is the reception hall. You will still have to pay for the officiant unless you decide to do what they did on Jane the Virgin and have one of your relatives or friends be your officiant and maybe they can do it for free or very low cost compared to another officiant. Tip number 14, days of the weeks can be cheaper than weekends. So probably, I, I didn't really look into this myself, but I just read this on an article before recording this, that probably what they mean by this is between Friday and Sunday, that's usually the weekend time, is probably the most expensive. So if you want to consider getting married between Monday and Thursday, that could potentially be cheaper. The next tip, number 15, make yourself aware of all hidden costs. Uh, this is really important when you're planning micro weddings. So in my research, I was researching different reception venues in my area. I was trying to stay in the Mississauga area because my parents, my grandmother and one of my aunts are not physically able to come to Toronto for a wedding celebration. So I've been trying to put everyone, like my guests first. And I really want my parents and my aunt, well, well, I want all of my aunts to be there, of course, but the ones who are wheelchair people, that's why I'm planning to get married in Mississauga because that's where they are. That's where I grew up. When I was researching some reception venues, I was looking in the square one area and I found some really small ones. The budget seemed really nice. The costs were nice and low like I like. They were really small. There was no room for dancing. If you wanted to play music, you had to pay a fee. If you were serving alcohol, you have to pay insurance for serving alcohol. Yeah, so they have music fees. Well, if you're dancing or if you're not dancing, but you're still playing music, make yourself aware of all the hidden costs. Try your best to find out everything in the fine print that could come up. I also know with those two venues that were nice and cheap, there was also like a deposit on top of the fee for the reception. This goes, would go towards your food and beverage cost. So my advice to you Try to be aware of all hidden costs. Tip number 16, don't bother renting a suit. I've looked on different websites like Tip Top Tailors, Moore's, Taylor Summer. The suit rental, yes, it seems cheaper than buying a suit, but buying a really good suit could be cheaper than you think. I found at least one website, the company is called Suits. You can buy a three-piece suit for $650. That is not as expensive as I thought it was going to be, given with buying shoes, tie, potential jewelry, like cufflinks. That could be extra. But if you're looking for a really nice, dapper-looking suit, definitely check out Suits. I will link them down below. Tip number 17. Don't be afraid to ask your bridesmaids or your groomsmen to pay for their own outfit. If they are also trying to keep costs low for themselves, maybe just give them the flexibility of wearing whatever they want. Not everybody looks the same in one type of outfit. So as long as you're okay with, say, not all your bridesmaids are wearing the exact same color and the exact same style of dress, then, and if they're okay with paying for it themselves, they can go through the headache of finding the cheapest dress for them to wear. And... You don't have to pay for it at the end of the day, depending on how many bridesmaids or groomsmen you may have. Last tip, number 18. Pop-up chapels have been a thing. I just heard of this this year. Pop-up chapel company is a Toronto-based company. They do pop-up chapel surf services across Canada in cities such as Toronto, Vancouver, Ottawa, Hamilton, and Prince Edward County. They are a shared wedding concept for micro-weddings. They marry 10 couples in one day at a shared space 
space. Couples pay a flat rate for a chapel space that includes ceremony, venue, and decor, a wedding planner, officiant, personal flowers, photography, live music, a toast, and the ability to bring up to 20 guests. Every $300 they collect from couples booking a wedding with them goes to a local charity. There will be a link in the description for Pop-Up Channel Company's website and YouTube channel, and you should check them out. I've heard that they're cheaper than getting married, like, at a place like church or wherever you want to actually get married. You'd have to actually look, look into that yourself. That's just something I've heard about and I have to actually look and compare the costs. I haven't made any phone calls to venues for a wedding or anything because I don't have the budget for it right now. So I don't have money to spend to make deposits right now. This is why I'm waiting. Basically, Gordon and I are going to be having a long engagement when the time comes. So that's another thing to keep costs low is just have a long engagement. You definitely want to pre-plan your plan so you really find the best deals for everything and you're not spending too much. So with all that being said, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Comment down below if you found it informational. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, turn on your post notifications so you know when we upload our next video, and give this video a huge thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next one.